I went home, I just tried to get my mind off of it because I was like, he really just stole my first kiss from me. Like, he literally was is the first kiss bandit. Like What's up, Johnson family? My name is Cedric, and today I have another story time for you. Today I'm gonna be telling you the story about my first kiss. I know I say it in every story time, I don't want the video to be long, but I genuinely don't think this video is gonna be too long because it really was a very quick, um, a situation, if you want to call it that. It was just, um, it just caught me off guard, and, um, yeah, it's, I don't think I've ever really told this story to anybody. Not because, like, it's, like, super embarrassing or anything, but I just, like, haven't felt the need to say, to tell people this story, so we'll see how this goes. <laughs> if you want to see more of me when the video is over, please do not hesitate to subscribe. Please like if you liked it, and please comment and let me know what you thought. And besides that, I'm ready, and if you guys are ready, let's get into it. So I remember this day pretty clearly because that morning, I had to get up at, like, 4 in the morning, 4 30 in the morning because we were we were trying to raise money to go to Disneyland to like go perform in Disneyland and so my teacher called the local news station I think it was KCRA 3 news pretty sure it was KCRA 3 um to come to our school and like record us and see if people would be willing to like sponsor us and give us money and stuff which actually worked we were able to get a lot of money and we were able to go to Disneyland and perform and stuff the choir is to raise about twenty eight thousand dollars and you can help they were just like, so we're a news station and we mainly focus on like bad things that happen. And so we can put you on the news, but it's probably going to be at like five, six in the morning. So we were like, whatever, any promotion, any exposure is good exposure, whatever. Just we just want to be on TV. So yeah, I got up super early that morning and I remember that I didn't do my homework for my classes the night before. And so like while we were getting ready for the news, like the news showing or whatever, I was like sitting down doing my homework or whatever. So in my choir, there was this guy. I don't want to describe him because I don't want to give away too much information, but he was a lot shorter than I was, and I remember that a couple of weeks prior, he had, he had came out to me basically and mentioned that he was gay. Everyone at the school was calling me gay because everyone is just like, calling people gay is a thing to do in high school for whatever reason. Um, and so he felt comfortable enough with me to tell me that he was gay and all that stuff, and so we had become like close, not super close, we were like, we were, we were period friends, that, that period. That class period was when we would mostly talk and then like whatever. So I remember that while I was doing my homework, he came to sit next to me and we started talking or whatever and I was telling him that I was like stressing and I was freaking out because like I had to get this homework done. He kind of was trying to give me like support, like you got this, you're gonna do this, it's gonna be awesome. But then he like slowly like started asking me like what I was doing after school. Usually after school, I had football practice. Oh, football. You guys, that is a whole nother shabam like that is a whole nother story time about me being in football and then like getting kicked out and all that stuff he asked me that if after practice if we could just hang out and whatever um because he he also lived maybe like 10 minutes of a walking distance from my house and so we were like we could just like walk home together and then you know like whatever so i'm like yeah as long as you're cool with with staying and like waiting for me while my practice is going on and then we can go home together like that's fine i'm not gonna trip about that so whatever we decided that we were gonna hang out so we, <laughs> so after practice, I went, I showered um, quickly because I don't want him to be waiting because that's rude. I go out and I found him and he was just like, so I don't want to walk home immediately. Why don't we go and like walk around this track? Because the, the school was like in a very country area. And so right near the school, there was like a horse track where people would go to like train horses and stuff. And there were, there were a lot of times where me and like my friends would go to that horse track and just hang out there and do whatever. And so he was like, can we go to the horse track and just kind of walk around and talk and just, you know, enjoy each other's company or whatever. I said, yeah, sure, no problem. Even all innocent and whatever. And so we get there, we're walking around, we see people training their horses and everything. Um, and he starts making little like comments. Comments that were leading towards like him liking me. And I knew, I knew, I, I, it, somewhere in my head, I knew that he had feelings towards me. I don't know how strong they were, but I just thought that if I didn't talk about them and I avoided them, that he wouldn't necessarily he, he would get the hint, you know what I'm saying? Like if I just didn't mention it and I just let him talk and they're like, oh, okay, cool, and then change the subject, that he wouldn't, that he wouldn't continuously try to like still get me to like like him or whatever. I don't, I, don't, I don't know how I was supposed to handle that. It was literally my first like gay anything. I hadn't really talked to any gay guys. I wasn't old enough to be on like Grindr or anything. Like I, and I wasn't like on Grindr at 16. Like I just wasn't like, or 15, 14? No, 13, I was a freshman, oh wow. Mind you, I'm a freshman, he's a senior. We're talking, walking around or whatever. So then we go and we find this like little bench to watch the horse races or the horse training or whatever. 
And so we're sitting on this bench, and every time I try to change the subject, somehow, some way, he maneuvers the conversation back to like that. Like I like he would say like something like like he would say something along the lines of like, oh, so you know, have you ever thought about you know being with a guy and everything? And I'll be like, uh, I haven't really given it too much thought. These horses though are so good. Like look at their look at their legs. They're so strong. <laughs> Literally every time he brought something up about you know, being gay, or if I ever consider being gay, I would always be like, oh my gosh, but this dirt though. Every single time that I would curb the conversation, he would bring it right back to, oh, so have you ever been to Pride? Like, he just kept asking these like, gay questions. I said something like, all right, well, I think it's time for us to like, start walking home because it's gonna, it's gonna be getting dark soon, even though it was like four o'clock. Like, I was just trying to come up with any excuse to get home and to get out of the situation. And he was just like, um, okay, well, before we go, can I ask you one more question? And I was just like, yeah, sure, of course. What, what can I help you with? And he was just like, Would you ever consider dating me? And I was like, um... Ain't nobody got time for that. I knew it was coming. Somewhere in my head I knew it was coming, but I still was just kind of like looking at him like, what did I say to him? I said something like, I mean, as of right now, I'm just trying to focus on like my music. Literally, mid-sentence. mid Freaking sentence. Imagine me just like, uh, like, yeah, I'm just trying to focus on my music. Literally out of nowhere, all of a sudden, I felt his lips on my lips. My first kiss was stolen. Like, my first kiss literally was stolen from me. I was looking at him like, and when I tell you this kiss was so gross, like, it was the sloppiest, wettest, <laughs> <laughs> most like I felt like I was kissing the Pacific Ocean and I, I didn't know what to do and so I'm just like well he's just like doing all this he's literally like grabbing my face like and I'm like all right okay and he's just like oh my gosh I'm so sorry like did you not like it blah blah, blah. he starts kind of like trying to make the situation better and I was just like I, I was just I was just shook I literally had his saliva on my face like I'm just like Shook. Like, I'm literally shook and I'm looking at him and I'm just like, I, um, 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 it's fine. Like, it's totally fine. Like, don't even stress. It's not like you just, like, pushed yourself on me or anything. It's not like I'm just, like, covered in your saliva right now. Like, don't even trip. Like, I'm drenched, but it's fine. You, you, you continuously tried to get me to say that I was gay and that I, I wanted you. And then when I wouldn't say it, you deliberately came out and asked me if I wanted you. And I told you that that wasn't necessarily what I was looking for. And then you just said, okay, cool. Well, let me just go ahead and kiss you anyway. It just, um, I didn't know what to say. I didn't know how to feel. I didn't know what to do. I would, we were just sitting there like, like I was just dumbfounded. I think I said something along the lines of like, hey, so I think it's time for us to, to walk back. Like, I, I think it's time for us to walk back home. And so literally, like, the walk home was the most awkward walk because, like, he lives 10 minutes from my house, but we both lived, like, 20, 30 minutes from the school, like, of a walk. So that whole time walking home, we didn't talk at all. And then, like, the path that we were going, his house was before my house. And so we're walking, whatever, and then we get to his house, and he's just like, all right, well, I'll see you later. And I was just like... Bye. Like, yeah, like you said, whatever. I mean, like, I just, I, I spent the next 10 minutes walking home just, like, thinking about what I was going to do, if I was going to tell my mom, if I was going to go to school the next day talking to him because we, we had the first period choir together. Like, I was just like, I don't even know. I don't even know how to process this. I went home. I just tried to get my mind off of it because I was like, he really just stole my first kiss from me. Like, he literally was, is the first kiss bandit. Like, now that I look back on it, I feel bad because he probably was just trying to, he saw someone that he felt like he could open up to in a romantic way and then just tried to like, he, he took a leap of faith, you know? And I, at the time, I didn't know how to process it. And so I feel like to him, it came off as like, I hated him at this point or I didn't like him. It went from us talking like every day in choir till now we were sitting on the opposite sides of the room. Like we just were not communicating and that literally is how it ended. And then he graduated. And then I didn't talk to him again until, it was maybe like a year or two after I had left that school. Probably my, my junior or senior year, I was still living in the same house and so was he. And then I got a message on Grindr from him and he was just like, hey, like, how are you doing? How are things? And we had a little conversation and then he came out and was just like, so do you want to come over and like hang out with me in my like bed? And I was just like, okay, this is, this is just not like, 
you obviously haven't learned anything. Like, this is just not. And so I didn't respond. I haven't talked to him since. And that was literally like six, seven years ago. So yeah, my first kiss was stolen from me and he almost made me drown. Like, <laughs> awesome. Well, thank you guys so much for hanging out with me today. I appreciate it. And I will most definitely be seeing you in the next one.